how to target specific colors or even values inside of Caden Live. This is for secondary color selection or secondary color correction. Hi, and welcome to Nuxtox Creative Studio. My name is Jonathan, and in this video, I'll be showing you how you can do secondary color selection inside of Caden Live. Let's get started. First things first, let's go ahead and download some custom effects stacks. They're free for download right inside of Caden Live. We simply have to go to the effects tab and then at the top we have a down pointing arrow. Left click on it, you'll get a pop-up window and you can search for LM. Let's scroll down a little bit and what we're looking for are the LM secondary HSL, LM secondary chroma and LM secondary luma. Go ahead and install them. Now if you've already installed them, you should go ahead and update them as I've recently made some adjustments. Once that's done, we can close out of this and get started. You'll find the custom effects in the effects tab at the top in the star that has the little pencil. They should be inside of templates. If you're not seeing them, simply close out of Caden Live and open it up again. I'll be starting with the secondary HSL. So I'll left click on the clip that I want to adjust. I've added a white balance here simply to do a bit of white balance. And now I'll add the LM secondary HSL, double clicking on it. I'll collapse all of these and disable the keyframes as I won't be animating this. Before we get started, let's first break down the anatomy of the effect stack. At the very top, we have the secondary color correction, area selection, mask. And this is what we'll use to grab the color that we want to isolate. And all the way at the bottom, we have mask apply. And this is what encapsulate the effect that we're going for. It'll make sense in a moment. So for starters, let's go ahead and grab our color picker. We can left click on an area or left click, hold and drag to get an average. Let go. And now if we uncheck mask apply, we can now see what we're grabbing. Mask apply basically applies the mask, meaning that any changes that we do will only be applied to the area that are being selected. So I'll go ahead and reset off this. I'll disable the mask apply for now so we can see what we're grabbing. Now. To refine our selection, we can either adjust the color that we've selected or we can adjust the color model, shape, the edge mode, and these sliders down here. So starting with the color model, RGB grabs the least, ABI grabs a bit more, and then HCI grabs even more. Now that's not exactly how they work, but that's in principle what you can expect from them. HCI, however, tends to be a little heavier. So for this, I'll go with ABI and I'll adjust the red, green, and blue deltas in order to refine our selection. And once we have somewhat of a decent selection, we can now use the soften, which will not only soften the edges of our selection, but also increase the selection of it. And from here, we can try to remove the unwanted areas like the ocean behind until we get something that is fairly decent. If we were to use HCI, for example, you could see it won't include the ocean. And if we scrub to our footage, we can see more or less what's being grabbed. All right, let's refine this even more. We then have Gaussian Blur. Now with Gaussian Blur, you want to make sure that the planes is set to alpha. By default, if you're using the custom effect stack, it should be set to alpha. But if ever you reset the effect, it will go back to the default YUV. Just make sure to set it back to alpha. The Gaussian Blur here is going to help us blur our selection. But if you go too far, it will start grabbing areas in the background. So let's keep this to a minimal. So let's say four and four for now. Next, we have transparency. Let's first acknowledge that everything that is black here on our screen is going to be excluded from our selection. And transparency, if we lower it all the way, you'll notice that our selection is darkening as well. So that's essentially what transparency is doing. It's the intensity of our selection. And then we have alpha operation. Alpha operations, we can do quite a few things with it. And one of them is to change the display. So how we're seeing our selection, what is red is being included and everything that's gray is being excluded. And we have different viewing modes available to us. So I'll leave this to image. With the alpha operation, you can do things such as growing your selection or shrink your selection. Now there is a little issue with the alpha operation when it comes to the edges of our screen. So if I zoom in, I go to the bottom here. Let's disable alpha operation. If you look at the bottom here, so at the edge of our monitor, if you will, and I turn on alpha operation with the shrink, you can see that it is pulling the alpha from the edges of the screen or the edges of the monitor into our image or clip. In a lot of cases, you might not want that to happen. So if you use it to grow, you get less of that issue. And if you use it to blur, you get 
none of that issue. All right, so you can use the alpha operation to shrink, grow, or blur your selection. There's also the option of threshold, which will give you much harder edges. And you control the threshold with the first slider, threshold. I'll use the alpha operation here to give a little bit more blur. We can disable transparency temporarily just to see what we're grabbing a bit better. Okay, and now if we check on mask apply, it should apply our mask. And now anything that goes above the mask apply would then be applied only to the selected areas. So if I were to, for example, introduce more blue, it would only affect the skin tones that we've managed to select. Now, of course, I encourage you to take your time to refine your selection, especially if you're working with skin tones. You can also use this in combination with a rotoscope. So if I were to look for a rotoscope inside of the video effects, but not with rotoscope mask, because anything that has the mask in parentheses, mask apply will apply it and it will ignore the secondary color selection. So best to use rotoscope and place it under the secondary color selection. To quickly demonstrate, I'll grab the rotoscope, I'll add it under the secondary color selection, and then I'll make a selection around our subject just to demonstrate a bit of how this works. So I'll close our selection by right clicking. And now if I were to disable the mask apply, so we can see what we're grabbing here, and I were to say minimum. So minimum is saying that out of everything, so if I were to turn this off, you can see we have the other hand here. If I turn this back on, so this is the minimum that we'll be grabbing. So just our subject here. You can use this with alpha shapes as well, as long as it doesn't have the mask afterwards. So now we'll take a look at the LM secondary Luma. For this, I'll first delete the effects that I've applied to this clip. And this time we'll do our selection based off of luminance. So I'll add the effects, collapse everything, and I'll turn off the keyframes as, again, I won't be animating any of this. With the Luma, if I were to turn off the mask apply, you can already see that the Luma key is grabbing the brightest areas and we can control what's being grabbed using the threshold. So anything below the threshold will be excluded. We have the slope so that we can soften the edges of our selection. And we have the pre-threshold and the post-threshold. And this right here is more of an overall effect on our entire selection, similarly to the transparency. So with this selection, we know that the sky is predominantly what will be grabbed and the skin of our subject and everything darker will be excluded. Same things, we have the Gaussian blur if ever we want to blur our mask a bit. Remember to set the planes to alpha. Then we have transparency, same thing still. And we have alpha operations. With alpha operations down here, we can use it to invert our selection, for example, so that we only grab the darker areas of our footage. And if we were to activate mask apply again, we have levels included in there if you wanted to darken these areas even more or even simply brighten them. Now, finally, we have the LM secondary chroma. Same thing for this clip. All I did was a bit of white balance. It was a little reddish. I'll go ahead and add the LM secondary chroma. So make sure a clip is selected, double click, or collapse everything, and then turn off the keyframes as I won't be animating this. The big difference with the LM secondary chroma is that we have the chroma key advance. So if, for example, we were to use the LM secondary, we're grabbing the skin tones here, and let's refine our selection a bit. So I'll do this very quickly. Okay. Now we can use the chroma key, grab our chroma key color selection. Let's say we grab this wall back here. If we disable the secondary color selection, we can now see what the chroma key is grabbing. Let's say we don't want to grab the skin tones, but only the wall, color of the wall that we've grabbed. We can adjust these values until we're grabbing just mostly the wall. And then we can use this to set it to subtract uncheck invert, turn on the secondary color selection. Now, if we turn off the mask, you can see here that the chroma key is allowing us to get a much cleaner selection by eliminating the areas that were being grabbed additionally. And with that, we now have a much better selection. We can add a little bit of blur to it if necessary. It's not mandatory. And there you have it. We can now apply our effects directly to the skin tones. And it doesn't have to be the lift gain gamma. You can add any other effects in between those. We could add a colorize. And now with the colorize, we could, for example, turn her into an avatar character. Of course, the table down here is being grabbed as the colors are somewhat similar to the skin tones. And for this, we could use a rotoscope to exclude the table. So add the rotoscope under the chroma key. I'll disable the keyframes. I'll make my selection. I'll make sure the rotoscope is selected. 
and then make my selection right click to close and now we can change this to subtract that has eliminated the part of the table that was being grabbed by our color selectors there you have it so this is how you can quickly grab secondary colors inside of Caden Live. Now, this was a quick demonstration. In your case, do take your time to get better selections. And that is it. Now, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, there is a thumbs down option, but who clicks on that? Seriously though, if you have any questions, doubts, or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. I have two Caden Live classes over on Skillshare. You can use the link in the description to get your first month of Skillshare for free. It is an affiliate link, so that helps as well. This was Nuxtux Creative Studio. My name is Jonathan. I'll see you next time.